is absent. Palermo is absent. Roe, Bigley, Harding, Johnson. Mr. President. I want to give a big shout out to all the nurses out there that provide care for us, including my sister-in-law, Margaret. Uh, my niece, Natalie, is graduating from Creighton Nursing School this week. And my coworker's daughter, Jessie Ripley, and all the nurses out there. The theme of 2023 Nurses Week is nurses make a difference anytime, anywhere, always. So if you have a loved one that's a nurse, be sure to be grateful and thank them as I know you will. Thank you. Thank you. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of legislative chambers. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Omaha City Council. We appreciate having you here today and to testify on our, on our many items. I would encourage you to turn your cell phones off or at least to vibrate. We have one presentation today, but before we do, I just wanted to make a note. Uh, we had a loss to the uh, city of Omaha family this week, we were notified by the Parks Department that our longtime manager of park maintenance in the Parks Department, Jerry Flood, uh, passed away uh, this week. Uh, he retired in 2005, I think was currently living in Colorado, but we wanted to make that note and um, definitely uh, comment on his public service to the city and the citizens and let his family know we're thinking about him. Thank you. Mr. Bagley. I have a proclamation today to read. Whereas Fred Astaire was born May 10th, 1899 in Omaha, Nebraska, first performing with his older sister in Vadville and Broadway. And whereas after landing a role in the 1933 film, Dancing Lady, Astaire was signed with RKO Radio Pictures beginning a successful 76 year career in stage, film and television with the biggest names of the day, including Ginger Rogers and Bing Crosby. And whereas Astaire's dance routines borrowed elements from tap, ballroom, and ballet, and revolutionized the way dance sequences in movies were filmed. And whereas Astaire received an honorary Academy Award in 1950, won five Emmys for his work in television, lent his voice to several animated children's TV specials, and received a Lifetime Achievement Award in 1981 from the American Film Institute. And whereas Astaire was a devout family man married to Phyllis Baker Potter in 1933 until her death in 1954, and then to Robin Smith in 1980, and had two children, Fred Jr. and Ava, before passing away from pneumonia at the age of 88 in 1987. And whereas 1880 House purchased the Astaire home located on South 10th Street in 2022 with the goal of restoration and preservation of this historic landmark. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City of Omaha officially designates May 10th, 2023, Fred Astaire Day in Omaha, Nebraska. In witness whereof, we have set our hands and caused the official seal of the city of Omaha to be affixed on this ninth day of May, 2023. And I have a real quick note from the step-grandson of Mr. Astaire. To members of the city of Omaha's city council, on behalf of my mother, Ava Astaire McKenzie, we would like to express our appreciation for this important proclamation declaring May 10th as Fred Astaire Day. It, and I have this for Mr. Ron Hug that did a lot of work on this. We appreciate your efforts. And I'll hand you this, but I didn't know if Council, Fessers, Council President Fesserson was going to show some dance moves of Fred Astaire. We can wait for that or I can give you this. So <laughs> thanks, Ron. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. While I'm stretching out, Ron, if you want to have some remarks, you're welcome. <laughs> um, other than saying thank you for the consideration and your time, I really appreciate it. Um, Fred Astaire was 
world famous and for his humble beginnings from Omaha puts us on the map. So thank you all again. I appreciate it. Yeah. Mr. Hardy. Um, Ron and I were talking a little bit beforehand, and uh, I, I, I said I didn't know you were such a Fred Astaire fan, but it's more your your love for, uh, I think, film and, and the actors and actresses that have come out um, of Omaha and have Omaha ties. And he kind of went through a list of them. You can, maybe if you could name a few of them. Oh, again, absolutely. Like uh, Marlon Brando, Nick Nolte, Montgomery Cliff, Dorothy McGuire, and... Um, Whenever, whenever I'm around Fonda and, yeah. Henry Fonda. Well, Henry Fonda wasn't born here, but he lived here. We'll claim him, though. Yeah, we'll claim him. He yeah. lived here long enough to say he's from here. Yeah. And there's many, many others, but from the golden era of film, them, those would be the highlights. But whenever I'm around other film buffs, I always try to stump them. Yeah. And um, I try to make a bar bet with him. I'm going to bet you a beer if you can answer this question. And the question is, who gave Henry Fonda his first formal acting lessons. Nobody knows? No. Marlon Brando's mother. Hmm. That's interesting. So I guarantee you can, you can win a beer every time with that one. It, it, it also, I, I'm going to task you with something, if you don't mind, because Absolutely. Of, of that list. Um, and I'm going to throw someone more contemporary like Alexander Payne. It would be interesting to know how many Oscars are affiliated with the, the acting tree, if you will, from, from Omaha. That'll be another bar bet, right? I won't say I'm personal friends with Mr. Payne, but he does know me. And uh, that would be a very good research project. And I think I know somebody who could probably yeah, work on that the easily. next couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, I could report back to you or uh, you know, all of you. And uh, But yeah, that's an interesting, because there's writers. Yeah. Um, there was Don a just said, like Don Beasley too. We forgot to mention Don. Yeah, th there Don Beasley. There was a, a, a writer or, or a director that, that just passed away here that uh, was an Oscar recipient sometime in the past. But yeah, I I, I, I accept that challenge, all Councilman. Right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for your work on that, Madam Clerk. Item six to consider a Class I liquor license for Hoo Hot Mongolian Grill located at 990 South. 72nd Street, Ace Communication Opposition. This item was postponed from our May 2nd meeting. We'll have the public hearing and vote today. Uh, proponents, please. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Caleb James. I am a regional manager for Hoo Hot Mongolian Grill. I've uh, been with them for 15 years. I do apologize about the rescheduling. Uh, there was just a little bit of miscommunication. Um, as everybody knows, the employment uh, uh, everybody's struggling kind of these days and we're kind of doing a little bit of restructuring with our company and kind of changing the, the culture and morale of management uh, with that being said we had a lot of high place uh, people in our uh, uh, company that was just kind of under the uh, you know thought one person was handling it versus another person um, and I'll take personal blame for that um, I recently took over the 72nd Pacific Hoo Hot, which is actually our training store for our entire company uh, throughout the Midwest. Uh, we have over uh, 25 different stores and plan on still expanding. Um, and uh, the only reason this is this should have been just a renewal as well. Uh, we have a third party um, company that handles our licenses and lets us know when everything's coming up and should be taking it on. And while we were negotiating lease prices for the building at 72nd Pacific. We were told that we were not allowed to renew our license until we knew exactly how long we'll own the property for, which I believe is incorrect at this point in time, um, but it did lapse. So we are uh, coming back in uh, asking for a brand new liquor license. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is it your address for the record too? 990 South 72nd Street. Okay, thank you. Any other proponents that want to speak today? See none. Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Uh, Mr. Begley. Thank you, Mr. President. Caleb, you don't have to get up, but I, when I called you last Thursday, you immediately apologized for that mix-up. So, um, I'll be glad to make a motion to support this today, and look forward to being out there again. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Make a motion approved. Motion and a second. Roll call. Row. Yes. Begley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Thanks. 
Item 7, to consider a Class D liquor license for Anderson Convenience Market, located at 4860 South 96th Street. Public hearing and vote on number 7 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. Ray Anderson, 17605 Rig Street, Rig Street, here representing ourselves, our family business, Anderson Convenience Market, for any questions. Thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Rowe. Motion and a second. Roll call. Rowe. Yes. Begley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. Item 8 to consider a Class K catering liquor license for TT Trucks Taps Patio, located at 5402 South 108th Street. Public hearing and vote on number 8 is today. Proponents, please. Kevin Wyatt, uh, 1126 Turner Boulevard, just seeking a catering license for uh, events for trucks and taps. Okay. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Mr. Rowe. I'll, move I'll second. Uh, Mr. Harding, you're recognized. I just had a question. I, I know we saw some emails going back and forth on this, but we're, we're, um, confident or we're okay with having the path set forward to, for the audit to be done for the restaurant tax yeah it was Todd Zafon okay he's got 15 months worth of stuff in his computer today so. okay all right thank you you bet thank you no further lights we'll call Roe yes. Begley Aye. Harding yes. Johnson yes. mr. president yes motion passed five to zero Items 9 through 11 can be considered together for Menard Subdivision, Replat 6, located northwest of 205th Street and Cumberland Drive. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Item 9, a resolution to approve a special use permit to allow convenience storage in the CC District. Item 10, a resolution to approve the final plat. Item 11, a resolution to approve the subdivision agreement. Public hearing and votes on numbers 9, 10, and 11 are today. Proponents, please. Hi, my name is Terry Morrison with Earhart Griffin and Associates, 3552 Farnham Street. I'm here on behalf of the owner to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Uh, Nick Brenner, 5101 Menard Drive, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, uh, here on behalf of Menards, also here for any questions. Um, I did have one other item um, to ask to consider, um, is that uh, so we have met all the conditions of the report up to date. Um, including the facade. Um, I did want to ask if it would be possible to forego the CMU um, facade on the north and the west side of the buildings um, just because they are screened um, from topography, existing vegetation, and new vegetation. Um, they're not visible from the right of way. Um, this is purely a ask on a business standpoint um, in that it would obviously save some money not having to do that, but there's really no benefit of having that facade on those sides. Um, obviously, we have submitted elevations with them, um, so if that is the decision today, we will continue to go forward with that. Um, but I did want to ask to see if there would be some consideration to forego the CMU on those two facades. Okay. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Mr. Hardy. To approve as submitted today I'm, I'm not um, I'm not asking for approval of the waiver just as submitted today there's a motion and a second no further lights roll call Roe yes. Bagley Aye. Harding yes. Johnson yes. mr. president yes motion passed five to zero items 12 through 15 can be considered together for Southeast 180 Maple Crossing located southeast of 180th Street and West Maple Road Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Item 12, an ordinance to rezone this property from AG District to MU District. Item 13, an ordinance to approve a mixed-use district <coughs> development agreement. Item 14, a resolution to approve the final plat. Item 15, a resolution to approve the subdivision agreement. Public hearing and vote on items 12 through 15 are today. Proponents, please. Yes, Mr. President, members of the Council, Larry Jobin, 11440 Western Road, appearing on behalf of the applicant, in this case, Costco. With me today is a representative of Costco, Brian Whalen, also several representatives from Olson and Associates, the consulting engineers on this particular project. I think we vetted this uh, project out pretty well on the preliminary plat, so I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. I would just point out that uh, they're looking to start construction 
in the late summer fall of this year with the completion of uh, late summer fall of 2024. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Uh, Socrates Office, 3217 North, 178-68116. Um, <clears throat> Costco said they're moving to our neighborhood. Um, we asked them for a few small concessions, which is not connecting um, their uh, <clears throat> lot to our subdivision. Uh, we realized that once they connect, they're going to bring increased traffic to our neighborhood, which is a safety issue. Um, that's that's the smallest concession we asked for. So. Um, I live three houses down from where Costco is going to be, and for the past two months, I've gone to their uh, Dodge Street location overnight and uh, sat there. And um, at night, uh, their operations create a lot of noise at night, so um, that's my reason for being against this. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other opponents that want to speak today? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Mr. Harding. I'll offer Larry a, if he wants to respond to any of that. Uh, yes, Larry Jobin, 11440 West Snow Road. Uh, we talked about this and connectivity and the requirement of connectivity with these types of commercial developments and the residential neighborhood. A uh, traffic study was done. The level of service at all the intersections are acceptable levels of service. Um, most of the people obviously will be going out onto uh, Emmett Street, which will be signalized at some point. And with this development, it'll become signalized and it operates uh, very efficiently. And I think we talked about that at the preliminary plat stage. So um, with that, happy to answer any other questions that you might have. There's a motion and a second. No further lights. Roll call. Roe. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Items 16 and 17 can be considered together for property located southwest of 72nd and Cass Streets. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Item 16, an ordinance to rezone property from GC District and MU District to MU District. Item 17, an ordinance to approve a major amendment to mixed use district development agreement. Public hearing and vote on items 16 and 17 are today. Proponents, please. Uh, uh, my name is Joe Flaxbeard with Lamper Nearson, 14710 West Dodge Road, on behalf of the applicant. Uh, no, the Crossroads project's been in front of this group a few times lately. This one's pretty short and sweet. Just a, a rezoning to pull an additional lot into the mixed use zoning district and the amendment associated with that work. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Larry Store, 5015 Lafayette Avenue, Omaha 68132. I, in general, am against all tests, but this specifically makes me wonder. I am against it, mainly because I don't think there's been enough transparency. We have a new name in the process now, a new face. And I've been wondering all winter and probably before fall as to why there was nothing happening at the crossroads. The buildings all went down and the grading happened real fast and then everything stopped and equipment disappeared. There weren't even people walking around over there. So I don't think we were told enough about that as to what was going on. Obviously some disagreements were going on and uh, some amendments to the agreements that had been passed even before the public found out about it, of course. That's standard for TIF and other things. Uh, before it comes to a public hearing, it's already decided. But, you know, we're at a disadvantage because we don't hear a lot of this stuff, so we have to go digging. And we citizens might make some misassumptions or misread some things or listen to the wrong people. But it's not just my words that I quote up here. Open Sky Policy has a major influencing building right across from the State House. And they've said a lot about TIP that's rather negative, more so than what I say. I don't have enough time today to quote all that or enough copies to give out to you. But they've been pretty negative about TIF, and they say some of the things that I have implied that 
uh, this is a lot of giveaway to developers. Some of these developers are also realtors. Now, I do spend a little time digging into your attachments on the agenda items. However, I do not understand how we can continue to give away $12 million, $13 million in TAF, TIF applicable fees. Uh, so, Larry, what we have today is a zoning item, right? That was the I'm item you're referring to is for last week. This has to do with 16 because I looked it up last night, but thank you, Pete. Yep, it's a rezoning. Uh, I think you just need a major city special meeting to, to explain TIF and how people like me are, are wrong, how people like me are lying. Because the school districts don't get the revenue, do they, for how many years? They get the lower price, which maybe was blighted to lower the price before the agreement was done. Those are questions that imply that they need answers that are honest and transparent answers. So we don't have to lie. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents today? Seeing on the public hearings closed, just let the record reflect this is a rezoning, not a tax increment financing item. And I would also observe there was a front page story yesterday that explains this whole thing pretty well for those that are interested. <laughs> Second, roll call. Roe, Bagley, Aye. Harding, Johnson. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Consent agenda. Any member of the city council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the city council immediately following the consent agenda and the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by the city council rules of order. The public hearings on agenda items 18 through 20 were held on May 2nd. There's a motion and a second. No further lights. Roll call. Row. Bagley. Harding. Johnson. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed five to zero. The public hearings on agenda items 21 through 40 are today. If you wish to address the city council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by name, address, and who you represent. And if you are a proponent or an opponent, I understand we do have a representative here on the sister cities item, perhaps? Please come on down. <laughs> I'm Steve Gertis, 3514 South 94th Street, Omaha, Nebraska, 68124. I am president of the Omaha Sister City Association. I'm here to speak to the resolution that encourages moving the current status of ECD Omaha Intercom from a friendship city to a sister city. I'd like to give the council a little bit of background as to the extensive work that has already been done. A delegation from France came here in 2019 to explore uh, what Omaha had to offer and uh, agreed that it made sense. And so a large delegation of Omahans in October 2019, led by Mayor Stothert, traveled to uh, ECME Omaha Intercom, where we signed a formal friendship agreement. Um, we are now talking about moving from that to a sister agreement. The underlying background of this is, of course, the world significance of the events at Omaha Beach that coincidentally uh, bears the name of Omaha and ties into a story with General Omar Bradley having a carpenter who was from Omaha, and it was the carpenter and his location that was used to signify the beach where the Americans would approach. So that's how Omaha gets connected. Emotionally, the friendship that there is between the French people and the American people is probably at its strongest in this particular area. Omaha, uh, Isigny Omaha Intercom is an affiliation of a large number of villages, towns, small cities that are located on this Omaha Beach area. And so it's an administrative district. It's different than the type of sister city relationships that we otherwise have. But this strong emotional attachment is incredible. And we also have a significant 
uh, American French population in Omaha. So I would urge the council uh, to go ahead and recommend this. Uh, if you do, there will be a signing ceremony next Thursday to which you will be invited uh, and a banquet uh, celebrating the signing on Friday night to which you would also be invited. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. And thanks for your work with the Sister Cities Association. Any other testifiers on items 21 through 40? If not, public hearings are closed. There's a motion and a second. Roll call. Roe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Item 41, a resolution to approve the contract with Western Engineering Company, Inc. for the 2023 Residential Street Resurfacing Package 1 Various Location Project is Amendment of the Whole requested by the Public Works Department. Public hearing and vote on number 41 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. I would note there's an amendment of the whole. Motion and a second. Roll call. Roe. Bagley, Aye. Harding, yes. Johnson, yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Item 42, a resolution to approve the professional services agreement with Leo A. Daly for the Omaha Police and Fire Headquarters Project. Public hearing and vote on number 42 is today. We'll start with proponents and I think we have a brief presentation and then we'll go to proponents and opponents. Good afternoon. Uh, Mike Eastman, City of Omaha Public Works Department. I'm here speaking on the resolution for the professional service agreement for Leo A. Daly for the Omaha Police and Fire Headquarters project. Um, in accordance with the Omaha Municipal Code, Leo Daly was selected per section 10 180 to 10 189. Um, October of 26, October 26 of 2022, the in, the city engineer published a request for the proposal. November 23rd of 22, the city received eight proposals for, from qualified firms. December 15th, the A&E selection team selected three firms from the eight for interviews. On January 12th, 2023, the A&E selection team interviewed those top three firms. Um, January 17th, Leo A. Daly was contacted on being selected for um, this project. Um, February of 23, I met with uh, Leo A. Daly multiple times to discuss their scope and fee. Um, March of 23, they submitted their proposal, and that is now what's on, in front of you today for approval is the, um, the first phase of their proposal. I'm going to go into a little summary on the professional service agreement so to kind of summarize what that involves. Um, the general scope of this project um, is dealing with the um, police and fire headquarters project. It also will encompass a study for a downtown police precinct, maybe part of this building, along with a, um, a fire station. So that's, we're going to look at those three um, entities during this whole entire process. So going from there, June of 23, um, the city, some si city selected people along with Leo Daly, we're gonna go visit um, multiple police fire headquarters buildings throughout the United States to, to see what works and just get some ideas. In July of 23 starts the programming process. Um, the Public Safety Facilities Planning and Design Seminar. We're gonna, Leo Daly's gonna have put on a seminar with the um, people involved to get an idea of what goes into programming something like this to just give some people some education. Out of this programming comes the space needs, user, specified spaces, adjacencies, and we'll end up with a gross square footage for this project. Um, then we will look in de developing site selection criteria then August of 23, we'll start looking at site evaluations based on those criteria from that programming portion of that. Then in um, October of 23, we're looking at starting the con um, concept design. The, um, we're gonna take two conceptual designs based on the best site that we've developed based on the criteria we've set forth 
and we will come up with um, two proposals along with some renderings and things like that to see what, what fits that site the best. There'll be bubble diagrams, elevation, engineering diagrams, and then we'll also come up with um, probable costs at that time. February 24, the schematic design will start. So that's the chunk, the biggest chunk of this proposal is that schematic design phase. Um, that will take uh, the top concept that we came up with will provide architectural site plans, floor plans, building sections, exterior elevations. We'll do narratives on the interior design, fire and life safety, structural, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, fire protection, um, furniture test fits, and then specification index. Then April of 2024, um, we will complete the schematic designs and, we'll, and they will be available to, to the public. And that basically ends this phase of this proposal that, that's in front of you today. That um, schematic design final um, presentation basically will be, um, there's a, a drawing in the proposal that shows what it's, that's, that's the quality of um, work that's gonna be provided um, along with cost estimates on the three entities or whatever we've, we've developed. And then that, that cost, that estimate that comes up with that, that's going to be the basis for, in 2024, it will go to the public for a, a, a bond vote. And then when the bond vote is approved, I'll give you a little, some quick history on, or some foreseeing of what's gonna happen. Leo Daly in June of 2024, will end up providing um, the second phase of their proposal to do the construction documents and the bidding and um, that portion of that project. Um, in, in July of 24, we're gonna kick off the design portion of this meeting or the, this project. March of 2025, we will start, we'll have the, the documents will be completed and then we will bid the project. And then um, May of 25, you can expect the um, general, the low bid general contractor's approval to come before you for um, approval um, for the general contractor. And then the plan is um, summer of 2027 for the um, construction to be completed. And then I'm here if you have any um, questions. Great, thank you for that overview. Any other proponents that wanna to speak today? Good afternoon, Greater Omaha City Council. Mr. Fredson, Donnie Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation, and North Omaha Concerned Citizen Foundation. Well, I support this for several reasons. One, in 2024, he has he said, we want the old police station to be turned over to African Americans to put an embassy of the United Nations and ambassadors. And we want also to add to this a purchase agreement, a Fox and Hound restaurant on 72nd and Crown Point. I talked to Fox and Hound, they said they'd be happy to come to Northam Hall, but we ain't getting any support from the city council. Thank you, sir. Any other proponents on this item? Louis T. Madness, 2709 Dewey Avenue. I also want to uh, point out that that was a good presentation. Um, that was a good overview. Thank you. Any other proponents on this item? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing's closed. Mike, I might just ask you a couple follow-up questions. Yes, sir. Uh, and or uh, Mr. Curtis, who, uh, who we engaged this morning a little bit in the Finance Committee as well. So this has been, a joint police and fire headquarters has been envisioned for many years um, to be located somewhere in the downtown area, realizing our current stations are quite old and have probably gone past their useful life uh, in terms of their, um, efficient uh, operations to our police and fire departments. So I support that division, and I, that, that, that vision, and I think it is important and something we do need to be looking into and we do need to accomplish for our police and fire departments and public safety, which is the most important thing a city does, right? Um, 
I want folks to understand, though, that as you explained, that if this is approved next week, it's just the first step, which is to assess the options, assess a new location. It's envisioned to be somewhere downtown. We don't have a site yet. Um, and although some renderings have been produced, um, those are still very tentative, too. And um, as are any cost estimates, um, I think in the past or in city CIPs, it's been expressed as around $80 million. Uh, which is a major undertaking and a major expense, but still just a very rough cost estimate at, at, at this point, right? Correct. And that rendering you're speaking to, that's just showing a quality of what's going to be provided. By no means is at this time, does that headquarters plan on even looking like that to our knowledge. That's, that's just a, a sample of what kind of quality will be provided after this, the, um, concept, the schematic design phase. Mm -hmm. And if located somewhere else in the downtown area, the current sites would be redeveloped, right? That'd be the idea for those. That's my locations. understanding. Yes. Yeah. And then talk about um, the potential financing of this too, or maybe this is a question for Mr. Curtis. However, you want to do it. Um, <laughs> so when this contract um, is complete, there'll be a cost estimate. And as you described, most likely a bond issue, general obligation bond issue to voters in, in May of 2024. Um, I think we don't know quite yet what that cost will be or what that impact would be on our uh, city finances, but I, I'm sure the, the um, effort would be to have that be a no tax increase proposition, right? Uh, Steve Curtis, city finance, that's correct. I think that would be our first uh, path. And it's a little early to know without knowing where it's going to be cited, what the cost will be, what the phasing will be, and what year it'll be. It'd be pretty hard to predict what kind of tax uh, effect it would have. Uh, we all know we've got a fairly uh, robust uh, history of not raising taxes even when they've been authorized if you look at things like street preservation bonds. So that would certainly be our first tax. Mm -hmm. And those bonds would, would have to come to the city council to be placed on the ballot at that point, right? That's, that's correct. They would probably be part of our normal authorization if we have it in time to do normal authorizations other than that. And yes, it would be a special vote. So several more items coming to the City Council on this issue, should it move forward, and definitely requires a vote of the people. That's correct. Yeah. I think that's important to note, and um, I think it's important to have on a project this, ma this major and on such an important topic. And then as to the contract expense itself, we talked about that this morning too. That's about 2.9 million, which was not budgeted in 2023, but we are confident given the current status of the general fund that that can be absorbed um, in the returns that your revenues that you're seeing so far this year. Uh, that's correct. Uh, for a number of different reasons between revenue, uh, primarily property tax valuations and a number of other things, there was enough for us to cover this under our current operations. Thank you. Right. I don't see any further lights. Next item. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is a this is the vote today. Yes. Uh, is there a motion? Motion and a second. Roll call. Roe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Item 43: A resolution to approve the settlement agreement of Jane Crudup, Crudup versus City of Omaha in the amount of two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Public hearing and vote on number 43 is today. Proponents, please. See none. Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Motion and a second. Roll call. Roe, Bagley, Aye. Harding, yes. Johnson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Item 44, an ordinance to approve an interlocal agreement with the City of Bellevue for yard waste disposition services. Public hearing on number 44 is today. Proponents, please. Uh, good afternoon. Jim Tyler, City of Omaha Public Works. I have here with me Epiphany Ramos from the City of Bellevue. Uh, I'll say a few words and I'll let Epiphany talk after uh, I say a few words. Uh, the City of Bellevue has approached the Public Works Department regarding the processing of yard waste collected from their residents, uh, similar to the agreement entered last year with the City of Council Bluffs. Uh, we are seeking an interlocal agreement between Omaha and the City of Bellevue. Uh, a few key considerations in this agreement. Um, it's a one-year agreement with a one-year extension, much like the one we did with the City of Council Bluffs. Uh, the anticipated tonnage is about 3,500 tons. That's going to be about 30 percent 
of the total that we do right now. Right now we do about 9,000 tons from the city of Omaha. Of that, 6,000 tons are curbside residential and about 3,000 tons are dropped off at the facility. Um, just a couple other things to note um, that the um, this will not not add any staffing to our um, to process the material from Bellevue and this is mu viewed as a mutually beneficial agreement and could lead to a future long-term agreement if uh, chosen by both parties and I'll go ahead and let uh, Epiphany say a few words thank you Epiphany Ramos City of Bellevue uh, wastewater and solid waste superintendent um, first of all, thank you so much for hearing Jim out and hearing me out today. And the city of Bellevue is really after best public policy here. Um, this particular waste stream has been a municipally managed waste stream um, for historically a very long time and very successfully. Uh, the city of Omaha is doing it extremely successfully. Um, the city of Bellevue is looking um, to really take on a pilot program so that we can evaluate the data that's collected during this and look for a sustainable uh, model for the city of Bellevue. Um, I think there has been some communication about um, how that may impact our current um, approved facility. Uh, the city of Bellevue has approved uh, the Omagro as an additional facility and historically speaking um, has been actually hauling to a transfer station into another city. So the haul is um, extremely far for us and this facility is within our ETJ. It's already municipally run and well run and we, we really hope to learn something from, from this pilot program with the city of Omaha. I'm here to answer any questions that you have. Any other proponents today? See none any opponents. Andy Harp and Al Soil Dynamics, Gretna Sanitation and Hillside Solutions, PO Box 810, Gretna, Nebraska 68028. Uh, we've been processing the city of Bellevue's yard waste for about five or six years now, and we've been doing it very successfully as well. Um, for us, this is a direct competition. The city of Omaha is directly competing with a uh, private business. We don't understand why that would be. Um, we, uh, when, when there's a private business available to do this kind of work, it does not make sense to have a municipality handle it on top of that. Um, we're charging, we were charging the exact same rate that the city of Omaha is charging Bellevue per, per ton. Um, and so for us, we just don't understand the logic behind um, these interlocal agreements. City of Council Bluffs, same thing. That should have gone out for bid. That should have been allowed for a private business to uh, potentially process those wastes. Um, that, that we were more, we're, we're efficient. We've done a good job for the city of Bellevue and quite frankly, it just doesn't make sense that the city of Omaha is trying to take over more of this composting material. So um, we're trying to partner with the city on uh, your climate action plan. Uh, but then here we are, we're getting hum hamstrung on about $120,000 worth of revenue per year. And for a small business like ours, that's substantial. So we'd uh, ask that you vote no against this interlocal agreement. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents today? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Mr. Harding. Uh, thanks, Mr. President. Uh, Jim, would you mind coming up? Uh, I, I know you and I had, had some conversations about this too, and I, I, if you'd like to talk about the reason for the interlocal versus bid, uh, maybe that's one area um, to respond to Mr. Harpino's question, it, as well as any other, uh, some of the other issues raised. Sure, so, um, and, and um, I can let Epiphany expand on the issues raised as to why Bellevue is making, uh, came to us. Right. Okay, so I, I would like to say that we're not trying to take over anything. Okay, we're just working with another municipality to came, came to us. Um, we do these agreements all the time. Um, it's a good governments working together as government entities um, in the best interest of the taxpayers. And, and that's, um, this is a mutual benefit for both parties. We'll get some additional revenue at our facility without taking on additional staff. And, um, and Bellevue is um, gonna 
not pay $120,000. They'll pay a little bit less than that to the city of Omaha. So it's beneficial for both parties. I, I think Epiphany has raised some concerns about um, wanting to work with our, or I'll, I'll let her expand on that, but um, she wants to work with the city of Omaha because she, she wants to work with our facility at Omicro. Yeah, so um, this, you, you the way- I'm sorry, you'll have to give your name. Sorry, Epiphany Ramos, city yeah. of Bellevue, um, wastewater and solid waste superintendent. So the, the waste stream for Bellevue is not five years old. It's, it's been around before I was born. Um, and it wasn't something that I really wanted to bring up to the council, but unfortunately there has been some regulatory concerns. And um, we also are looking at a sustainable model that's local. Um, the trucking of our yard waste for compostable purposes um, out to Gretna utilizing a transfer station is unfortunately not the best um, sustainable model. Uh, looking at best public policy and working with the city of Omaha on a really best in class uh, operations model that they have there is, is what we, we would prefer to do. Um, I could answer any other questions, but essentially it's, there's, there's no competition here. It's, it's, it's not really about competition. Um, that particular facility has been the only um, MRF uh, for this particular waste stream. So unfortunately it's, it's kind of been more of a monopoly and, and Bellevue believes that this, this public policy and this program um, in a pilot notion will give us the opportunity to look at um, actually creating a, a better model for Bellevue. All right, thank you. Thank you. Jim, maybe one question for you too. Um, so I think this proposed contract, uh, which has a vote next week, is for the rest of this year and could be extended for another year? Yeah, and, and we, we um, like, um, we, we modeled it much like we did for the city of Council Bluffs. They were doing it for different reasons and Bellevue's looking at this as to where um, they're, they're looking for different alternatives to what they have now. So this is a one-year agreement with a one-year extension so th if they can understand if this is the agreement they want to enter into potentially on a, a longer term. And the city of Omaha is obviously committed to, in the long term to our composting operation, even though it, it's possible it could change locations. Yeah, and, and we have identified a location. The city owns property down near 60th and Harrison. And actually, we own some additional property with, with a road relocation that was done down there. So we have established a site layout um, that would fit at that location. We don't have final plans or anything to move there yet, but we have a site layout. Um, uh, and plans and a cost estimate to move from our current location at our Pillion Creek wastewater facility, which is going under a plan expansion in a few years, and that's why we have to move off that current location. Okay. And if there was a transition location, um, no issues with our current obligations under our waste contract, nor the commitment to do more with potentially Bellevue and Council Bluffs. Right? No, ab absolutely not. So, so uh, with Bellevue their hauler will be bringing the material. It will have no impact on our hauling contract. Um, our, so, that, so this contract has nothing to do, this work with Bellevue has nothing to do with FCC. The move of our compost facility, as long as it's located within um, a current distance from the current facility, and this one will actually be closer, that um, everything will stay at the same price with our hauler. And that's to be determined, so it could be two or three years out at least, right? We're, we're, looking, we're looking a couple of years out. We're actually reevaluating the timing of the work down at the Papio, and so we're a we're, um, cu couple of years out probably with that. All right. Thank you. No further lights. Next item. Non-action items, items 45 through 51, do not require public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on agenda for consideration. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion and a second. We'll call. Rowe, yes. Begley, Aye. Harding, Aye. Johnson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 5 to 0. Meeting is adjourned at 249.